Hi, David. Hi, hey. Doug. I'm Camila Dominguez with Vince Mac Powell. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Pleasure. Pleasure. Yeah, thank um, you. My question is for Doug, but before I ask, I just want to say, David, Book is one of my favorite characters, and he is just incredible. I love him so much. Thank you for playing him the way you do. He's sweetheart. Uh, thank you. That, that's, that's so kind. <laughs> thank thank you. you. Appreciate it. Sure. Thank you. Um, Doug, so Saru has been on a cornerstone of just emotional and ethical guidance throughout the series so far. Um, how do you feel about his evolution and the legacy that he's going to leave behind in the Star Trek universe once this incredible series is over? Ah, thank you. Now, first of all, uh, was there a technical issue, you guys? Were you wanting this to hold for a second? Yeah, you need to hold for just one. We can need to hold for a second. So sorry. Just gonna hold. Oh, sure, sure. No, that's totally fine. There, something happened. Oh, good. gotcha. Okay. Uh, question. Something about ethical. Something meant. Uh, <laughs> how, oh, do you, yes. how do you feel? How do you feel about Saru's um, like evolution and the legacy that he's leaving behind once discovery is over? Uh, he, yeah, Saru has been on quite a journey over, over the course of this series, uh, starting as a very fearful. Uh, climbing through the ranks, kind of first Kelpian in Starfleet kind of a character, needing to prove himself. And now we're at a place in season five where he has proven himself time and again, and he's, and he's risen in rank and title uh, and changed and, and become more of, a, of an empathetic character to the younger crew members and been more of a, more of a parental figure and, and a mentor and guiding them along as they make their decisions. And, and even, even uh, with his sister-brother relationship with, with Michael Burnham, um, she has made some decisions that he did maybe wouldn't have done and, and has had to reprimand her when he's outranked her. Or, and we've had, we've had breakup scenes and makeup scenes enough to have gone through an awful lot together to where uh, there's such, a, such respect and admiration now uh, among everyone in the crew and Saru being I, I like being the older gentleman in the uh, in the the crew that that can be that parental figure. It's been great for him. It's it's been wonderful watching him go from you know the fearful to to the solid Kelpian that he is now. It's just yeah. it's been a wonderful journey to witness. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Thank you. And Tony, you can take the next one. Thank you. Hi, Tony Tomato, Sci-Fi Talk. You both share a relationship with Burnham, so mm. yet you both intersect with her. Uh, talk about how that's how that kind of comes into play this season a little bit. Uh, there's a wonderful scene, Doug, that you have with uh, that he has with with Burnham that is fantastic in one of the episodes. I won't say what it is, but it's fantastic. But yeah, please, uh, David, you start, please. Yeah, I guess um, it's interesting to propose a, a question like that. They both have different experiences with Michael Burnham, and I guess the experience that Michael Burnham will have with Cle Cleveland Booker, no matter how their relationship plays out, is he has inspired her to be the most authentic version of herself, to embrace that, to be at peace with that, to understand that you can be a leader, you can be vulnerable, you may not know all the answers at the same time, you may make mistakes, you may be liked, disliked, all of those things can exist at the same time, not one, ex not one existing exclusively without the other. Um, their relationship is a relationship that's built upon kindness, truth, honesty, and love. So they're always gonna be in each other's lives. And I think their relationship is um, a relationship that can stand the test of time. Yeah. And uh, uh, different from their mad, passionate love story, <laughs> <laughs> Saru and, and Burnham are very, very more like the siblings who have gone through the, st the phases of competition and being at each other's throats a little bit and being jealous of mom's attention, you know, <laughs> or whatever. And then uh, growing into, oh, we've been through life and death together. Uh, we, we've had disagreements and then we've had, had coming back together again many a time over the, over the course of the, of the series. And we've, uh, we've protected each other. We have um, gone through so much so that when it comes to a place in season five, where change might be afoot for Saru, where he has, he has an opportunity coming. What does he do with that? His tether to the, to the Starship Discovery really is her. Mm. And, and uh, so a moment comes, won't say what or why, but uh, where he, he expresses a sense of family with her by touching foreheads with her, something that, that we Kelpians do. 
Uh, I did it with my sister, Serana, uh, on, uh, in an earlier previous season. And, um, and also with Sukal, my, my young protege that, uh, that we found, and, and I helped him become a Kelpian again and find himself among our people. Uh, forehead touches. It's, it's not a romantic thing, it's a family thing. Mm. And so there's a moment where, where uh, Burnham and Saru, uh, where I, I guide her into a forehead touch that was really, really quite touching for both of us. Fantastic. Thank you, guys. And Avery, you can take the next one. Hi, I'm Avery Kaplan from Comic Speed. Um, my question is for David. Um, so book is obviously an important part of all three of the last seasons, but he is not a member of Starfleet. And I'm curious what it's like to play a character who is sort of an outsider among such a tightly knit crew. Um, I guess what's really special and a gift for, for an actor is to be able to have that peripheral or outside perspective. With Cleveland Booker, he's someone who operates on the, the underbelly of society. <laughs> and being able to have that experience and then to be able to come into this world where things are done in a certain particular way, he's able to weigh up the two, which contrast so, um, which the contrast is so extreme with, with the two, he's able to look at the two and see the benefits of both. And I think the glorious thing which happens in season five is he is able to see without being prompted, without being persuaded, to see the benefits of being part of Starfleet. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a testament to what Starfleet stands for. There's someone who could be so um, uh, uh, tunnel visioned in their perspective, can kind of humbly fold under the togetherness of Starfleet. And Ashley, you can take the next one. Hi. I'm Ashley Thomas with fangirlish.com. Um, and hey. something I'd like to ask uh, the both of you, uh, I think both Saru and Book are two of the best examples of positive masculinity on television. Mm. Could you both speak to what that means to you? Uh, wow. I, I, by the, thank you for thinking I'm masculine at all. Uh, <laughs> it's very sweet of you. Um, uh, but I, uh, yeah, positive masculinity. Uh, uh, yes, I, I believe that that Saru does. He does uh, lead and lets others lead uh, according to level of skill, uh, uh, level of of uh, wisdom. Whoever whoever in the room has that, that's who should take it. So even in my in my relationship with President Tarina. Um, she takes the lead often in our in our, in our really because she she knows better than I do in many many situations, uh, and so to be to be a male figure who can who can be confident in that moment, great. Hmm. And I know actually you know we celebrated that moment by having a little fist bump on a fun level, but you know but with a level more meaningful, piggybacking off of what Doug was saying, it is true to be able to. We both have women who are very strong, strong, who are leaders. Behind every good, great woman is herself. <laughs> Michael Burnham doesn't need Cleveland Booker. However, they do bring out the best in each other. And I think it's a really wonderful trait, characteristic for a Cleveland Booker to comfortably allow and encourage his lady, his partner, his kindred spirit to thrive. Mm. It's, I think it's a very sexy, powerful trait. Thank you, Karen, you can Thanks. take the next one. Thanks. Karen Mole from Sci-Fi Vision. Thanks so much for speaking with us. Pleasure. Um, Doug, you spoke uh, at length about Saru, uh, his emotional intelligence, um, his, his instincts to be a good mentor and a leader and to, to help um, less experienced people along a similar journey to his. He is now in a relationship with a person in love with someone who, um, yes, outranks him and doesn't need his advice, but also is a Vulcan and doesn't mm -hmm. like come from that same mm -hmm. position. And uh, we do see in these early episodes, his instinct continues to, uh, to be a protective instinct. Um, what, uh, is, what is there, um, for him to take and learn from this relationship and, uh, I mean, you can't tell us how it's going to end, but <laughs> with, I'd love to know what's in store for those two. Yeah. Oh, thank you for uh, I, I, this love story has been meant the world to me. I, I didn't. Uh, 
that's the one that wish I had for Saru throughout this entire series. Was, can he find love? You know, <laughs> and when you're playing an alien, uh, non-human species, it, it's nice to have a love story. It's rare, it's more rare. So uh, here he uh, so coupling him with a, a Vulcan perfection. <laughs> I thought they, they're both very diplomatic and they're both very poised and proper. Um, uh, finding yeah, but but you're right. He has. I don't think his protection, he does mention wanting to be protective of her, and she's very adamant in telling him she does not need my protection, mm -hmm. and that's fine, I needed to hear that, but, I, but the instinct to protect is not just one of like, I got this, you're, you're, you know, you're not gonna, be, you're too weak to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. It was not that at all, it was more out of just a place of love, like I care about you, I hope you would protect me as well when the time mm -hmm. comes. Well, I can't. I, I'm, I'm holding out for a happy ending for those two. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. I think I think one's coming. Yeah. <laughs> and Lori, you can ask the next one. Hi, David and Doug. Lori from Trek Movie. Hey, Lori. Hi. Lovely to see you. Um, this is a question for both of you, but it's based on something I heard David say in his fantastic interview with the Sci-Fi Sisters. Um, <laughs> and you talked about how you were glad that you guys didn't know that it was the final season as you were filming because everything would have felt so weighted and heavy. Mm -hmm. But as I watched these four episodes, I really, I felt it. Like, I felt like you could see it in a lot of the scenes and the way everybody was with each other. And I'm wondering, do you think you maybe had a sense of it anyway, or was it really like out of nowhere. No, I mean, I, mm. I I had no idea that this was the final season until literally we finished filming season five. I, I had no, and, it, and it was a few months after when we found out, and it was a Zoom call. I had no idea whatsoever. Yeah, yeah and when, uh, from, from my personal storyline, for Saru's storyline throughout season five, uh, it felt like, you know, this this could be this could be a good finale for him uh, mm -hmm. before I knew it was our finale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so when I heard it was, it was like, well, you know, that kind of almost makes sense, you know, for me personally, selfishly. Mm -hmm. uh, and then for the whole show, um, we had the we had the luxury of going back and filming a little epilogue or a mm -hmm. coda, they were calling it. Uh -huh. that we could tack on to the last episode that would that gives you, the, the, the watcher, the, the audience, a sense of, of closure for the whole series. Yeah. That was really important. Because so even though you know we had finished shooting season five, I think as a body of work, it still could stand and that could be presented. Yeah. But to, like you said, Doug, to be able to have gone back to shoot the coda, yeah. um, just tack it on to the end, that that just really helped to neatly button end it. it yeah, it, yeah, a button and, it needed. And we didn't have to do a crazy amount, mm -mm. did we? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And Aaron, you can take the final question. Thanks. Um, my question for you, Doug. Uh, you've talked about wearing the Saru makeup and the process that goes into that, you know, many times. Um, you know, this year you're also doing it while you're running around a jungle, you're dodging explosions. <laughs> What's the extra challenge that you face in that kind of setting where you're not just walking around and set in the studio? Right. We you know when you're wearing hoof boots, that a high heel position with no heel, it's, it's perilous enough on a flat floor. Uh, go out into the woods with sticks, rocks, mm. uneven terrain, mm. it's even more, yeah, a lot at stake. So I want to give credit where it's due. My stunt double, Boston Kamalari, uh, he's 25 years younger than me, a tall, skinny guy who can take a hit and, and live through it. God bless him. He has saved my life. On, so He was my stunt double for Shape of Water and for the, uh, what we do in the shadows and for Star Trek all five seasons. So uh, I want to bow to him and other stunt people like him. Who, uh, who save us actors and keep us uh, uh, all of our limbs in one place. <laughs> it really, he took over a lot for the, the, the forest action Saru scenes. Uh, he did a lot of the work for me. And, I, and again, as a 63 year old uh, skinny guy, uh, I am happy to let a young person, you go do that. So I'm gonna stay here and keep my hips together. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, aside from the action part of it, though, is it more of a challenge with prosthetics when you're out in an environment rather than being on stage? Uh, depending on the environment, yes. Uh, uh, you know, it was uh, when we filmed uh, episode two in that that um, away mission on the planet. Uh, it was outdoor foresty. There was some sunshine, but it wasn't. It was really quite cool and lovely. Uh, so I I was not facing any discomfort that I wouldn't on a regular set. All right, great. Thank you. Yeah.